Today I want to show you my keyboard. I'm using a Moonlander, which is a nice split keyboard and with uh, really nice looks and you have colors, configurable colors on each uh, key and you have a nice thumb cluster. You even can tilt it if you want and you can put it into a bag and um, take it with you wherever you go. I really like the layout of the keyboard and I really like to put the, the trackpad between those keyboard halves. And the real power of the keyboard comes from the configuration. Let me show you how the configuration of this keyboard looks like. So this is the web page of the keyboard, the Moonlander. Um, it's a really nice keyboard. I really, really like how it looks. I really like how it's used and I like how it can be configured. And this is the main thing of this keyboard. So you already see this nice looking keyboard with this nice keys and everything. But the real power comes from configuration. So this is the configurator of this keyboard. It's Oryx. And it's a web page where you log in and um, you create a layout using the base layout, the default layout, or other layouts you see on the site. And what we see here is I have six layers on this keyboard. I only use kind of four, but it doesn't matter how much layers you put onto your keyboard, so everything is fine. You can put, I, I guess you can put six. Uh, 36 layers on every key. Um, I have six right now, um, but it's, it's just the beginning. I have the keyboard since end of December last year, so only for about uh, a month, and I will change the layout um, as soon as I need to. I have the base layout. The base layout is uh, what I use mainly for typing. I have the normal characters, I have the numbers over there, there are special characters in the thumb cluster, like opening Alfred. Um, it's a launcher for applications. I have a key for move a line, move a selected line, one line up in Xcode. Um, the same on the other side to move it down. I have a key for open quickly in Xcode. And uh, then there are those keys that switch between those layers. So this key, when I hold it down, it switches to layer 4 as long as I press it. This switches to layer 5 as long as I press it. And those two switches to layer 1 and layer 2. And I had a, a Plunk keyboard before I got this um, Moonlander. And let me show you the Plunk keyboard. The Plunk keyboard is a minimal keyboard that looks like this. And as you can see, the, the number keys are missing and some other keys are missing as well, like the special characters, um, parentheses and all that. So what, we, what you do, you use different layers on this keyboard to get to those keys. So you have the base layer and you have a lower layer and a higher layer, the raised layer. And when you want to type special characters, you press hold the lower layer key, and you switch to the lower layer, and then you can press the special characters like this, or the function keys if you like. And if you press and hold the raised layer, you get the number keys and some special characters. And I got used to the plunk, but I wanted to have a keyboard that is more powerful, that has, that, that has more keys, um, and uh, that I can use without switching that much between layers. So I got the Moonlander, but I got used to having the special characters on the Q Y, W, E, R, T, and so on keys. 
and the numbers as well that I put it onto my moon lander as well. So it's like a plunky-ish layout for the moon lander. So I have a lower key, a lower layer where I have the special characters like this, like I had on the on the plunk. And I have a higher layer where I have the number keys here and some special characters. And I also have, when I switch using this key to the media layer, I have keys that can simulate mouse inputs. This looks like this. So I now press this key and I move the mouse just with the keyboard. I don't have to to lift my fingers from the keyboard to move the mouse. And I even can click the different buttons on the mouse. This is really nice. And I also have an Xcode layer. This is not really used yet, but I plan to use it a lot in the future. I have to figure out what keys I want to put there. But at the moment, I only have the control keys here. Control 1, Control 2, up to Control 6. And what this does in Xcode is, when I now press the, the key that switches to layer 5, and I then press the Control 6 button, I get this item selector, if you will, the item selector in a jump bar. If I press the, the switch layer to, to switch to layer 5 and I press Control 5 I get the, 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 the selection, the menu for the group and I switch the, if I use the Control 2 button I get the history. So this is really nice to have a layer just for Xcode shortcuts and I will put there more keys uh, in the future as soon as I have figured out figured out what I want to use. So this is my layout of my Moonlander keyboard. I really like the Moonlander keyboard and I just wanted to share how powerful it is because I think um, I think if you see the price which is about 300 euros um, most people are shocked and can't imagine why one should pay this much for a keyboard. I think it's worth it and you can now chat for yourself if you would like to have uh, those nice layers on, on your keyboard. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, the video and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have fun.